Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Pop Wheat. It's neat. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin'. The Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. And just as quick as a gunshot... The minute you taste them, you'll know they're the ones you want for breakfast every morning. Yes, when you pour out a bowl full of swell-tasting Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice, add milk or cream and your favorite fruit, they score a quick hit with your appetite. So crisp, so tender, so tempting. Mmm, you just can't beat delicious Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. Enjoy this treat. Starting tomorrow. Jim Kenyon had run a trading post at Green Island Lake for ten years when the Yukon Trading Company opened a post in competition on the south shore of the lake. Red Carney, who had often been suspected of outlaw activities in the district, was installed as manager, and Jim knew he was in for trouble. It started one night late in December, as Kenyon and Bill Hayden, his young assistant, were checking over their accounts. A dog team stopped outside. Uh, You'd better see who that is, Bill. Yeah. Late for a traveler. It's Carney. Yeah, hello, Bill. How are you? I was feeling fine up till now. (laughs) Well, aren't you going to ask me to come in? Come in and shut the door. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, take a lesson from your boss, Bill. You want to be a good trader, you have to make everybody who comes to your post feel welcome. No matter who it is. <laughs> what brings you here at this time of the night, Red? Well, sir, I just received a letter from the Yukon Trading Company headquarters in Dawson. They want me to make you a proposition. What kind of a proposition? Well, you should be able to guess. They don't like competition. They want me to buy you out. How much? Five thousand for your buildings, your pelts, and your trading goods. <laughs> Five thousand? Show them your books, Jim. Our inventory runs to nearly ten thousand. I'm offering five. Take it or lose every dime you have. So you mean to run me out of business, huh? That's it. The company's willing to lose money for a while to get control of the district. If you don't sell, we'll start offering better than market prices for pelts. By the end of the winter, there'll not be a single Indian coming here to trade. Get out, Better think it over, Jim. I don't have to. The offer you've made is nothing but highway robbery. Why, this post is worth 15000 at least. Not with us at the other end of the lake. But even if you offered me a fair price, I wouldn't consider selling. The Indians around here are good Indians. They deserve a square deal. And I won't turn them over to you to cheat and rob. Why, you... Don't reach for that gun, Red. You're covered. <laughs> So you think the Indians around here are good Indians? All of them, except for the few renegades who who used to be in your gang. What gang? The one that's been responsible for every trail robbery in this district for the past three years. I don't know how you managed to get a job with the Yukon Trading Company. You're nothing but a crook. (laughs) I'll give you one more chance, Jim. Get out. Okay. I warned you, though. Now you'll be running into grief where you least expect it. You heard what Jim said. Get out. Okay. 
And shut that door. <laughs> Grief for your least expected. What do you mean? Must be that you're going to double cross me. Me? Well, this isn't any time for kidding, Jim. What did he mean? <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll have to be prepared, that's all. And fight. There's one thing we'll not do, and that's take the law in our own hands. I want you to be careful with your shooting iron. Well, sure. Use but... it to protect our property or in self-defense, but that's all, you understand? Yes, sir. Of course, I'm glad you know how to use it. Oh, say, by the way, uh, Mary will be coming home from a visit with the Bradford today after tomorrow. It uh, might be a good idea for you to drive into White Horse and bring it back. Well, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> I thought you might like it. As a matter of fact, I, I've been meaning to ask you. That is, um, Mary and I have talked it over, and I said I'd talk it over with you while she was gone. Yeah? Of course, I realize she's the only family you have, and you don't want to lose her, but you wouldn't really be doing that, w would you, Jim? Uh, <laughs> this isn't any surprise to you. Yeah, no, Bill, I... Hey, Indians. what's the matter with them? They sound like they're on the warpath. Those renegades are carnies, taggish Mike and Sleeping Bear. Yeah, come on. There they are, over by the storehouse. They have torches. Yeah, come on. By the light of their torches, Jim and Bill could see a crowd of Indians milling around the storehouse. Then they recognized the leader. Jim, that's White Eagle's son giving orders. Well, this is what Connie meant, huh? Grief where we least expected it. He's turned the good Indians against us. But how could he? Well, listen to them yell. They're half crazy. He's been giving the young braves fire water. Shall I use my gun? Yes, but shoot over the head. I'll shoot you kill next time. Get away from that door. They're making a break for it. Shall I go after him? No, no. We'll see how much damage they've done. Come on. Door looks all right. Yes, they didn't even touch the padlock. Do you think they'll come back? No, not tonight. But there's no telling about the future. Jimmy, it's against the law to sell an Indian liquor. You don't have to tell me that. Carney can't get away with it. Someone will have to tell him so. I'll return his call the first thing in the morning. And this time it's I who'll give the warning. The following morning, Red Carney and his right-hand man, Taggy Mike. Watch Jim Kenyon stop his team in front of the Yukon trading post on the south shore of the lake. Well, <laughs> he's right on time. See to his dog. Okay. Just leave dogs where they are, Kenyon. I'll unharness them. No, that isn't necessary. Where's Red? Right here, Jim. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. No, thanks. I'm only staying a minute. Change your mind about selling? No. I'll never change my mind. I don't have to tell you what happened at my place last night, do I? Huh? Anything wrong? White Eagle's son and about a dozen of the best Indians we have in the district tried to break into my storehouse. Did you hear that, Taggish? He said the best Indians. And you want to protect them from me. I still want to protect them. Any rotten polecat who'd sell an Indian liquor ought to be strung up by his heels. They can't stand it, and you know it. Sure I know it. They go crazy when they get drunk. No one can control them. Why, there's no telling what they'll do. You counted on that, didn't you? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about trouble where I least expected it. <laughs> yes, go ahead and laugh. That's all the admission I need. But now it's my turn to give you a warning. We have laws here in the Yukon, and we have a great organization to enforce them. The Northwest Mounted Police. About 20 in the whole territory. I haven't seen any around here. You will before long. The best man on the force. Yeah? Sergeant Preston. He's making his headquarters in Whitehorse. Bill Hayden went there today to get married. And he's bringing the sergeant back with him. Well, what for? To find out who's been selling liquor to the Indians and throw the crook in jail. Uh, did you do it? No, I think you did. This is all the warning you'll get you want to raise the price you pay for pelts and try to put me out of business, I can't stop you. When you start breaking the law, the Northwest Mounted Police step in and they always get their man. You report me to them and you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Just watch your step. Well, boss, shut up. If sergeants show up here, be plenty tough put your deal over. I happen to know he is in Whitehorse now. He went up to Dawson. 
Where's Louis? At Sleeping Bear's village on Painted Creek. You got work for him? Yeah, for Louis and Sleeping Bear and half a dozen of their renegade pals. Boss, you ain't going to send them to Kenyon's post. He has Indians work for him who hate Sleeping Bear. Mary Kenyon's been staying with the Bradfords and Whitehorse. And Bill Hayden's gone into town to get her. Worth of it. He'll be coming back tomorrow. And the sergeant won't be with him. Now listen. Here's what I want you to tell Louie. There's a spot where the trail runs through the forest. About ten miles east of here. It began to snow early the next morning. But in spite of the bad weather, Bill Hayden and Mary Kenyon set out from Whitehorse for Green Island Lake. By noon, they were only halfway through the forest. And they stopped to rest the dogs. After building a shelter of pine boughs at the side of the trail, Bill brought his primus stove from the sled, checked the oil, and lit it. Mary made tea, and they huddled close to the stove. Bill, why are we traveling in this snowstorm? Why didn't we stay in Whitehorse until tomorrow? Is anything wrong at the lake? Well, uh... you were trying to find Sergeant Preston last night. Why? I had a message for him. From whom? Your father. What was it? Well... You know about the new post? Yes. That Red Carney's managing it. Yes. He's selling liquor to the Indians. He's doing everything he can to make trouble for us. Your father wants Sergeant Preston to come to the lake as soon as possible. Oh, is that all? Oh, it's serious, Mary. When is the sergeant expected back in Whitehorse? Soon. Perhaps today, perhaps tomorrow. I left word for him, but I, I didn't think we should wait. Carney wants to buy your father out, and he said... That... Over here, behind this tree. Those men are shooting at us. Keep down. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Everybody's been talking about presents. And here's a present you can give your appetite every morning. A heaping bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice covered with milk or cream and fruit. You know, these famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals... Are... Oh, excuse me a minute. Hello? Are you the man who sells Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice on the radio? I sure am. Well, uh, I'm one of Santa Claus's helpers up here at the North Pole. You're what? Uh, you know who Santa Claus is, don't you? Why, of course I do. Well, I've been helping him make toys. Now that Christmas is over, I'm out of work looking for a job. You mean you want to help me sell Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice? Uh, you catch on fast, buddy. And I'll do a swell job because I know all about those swell cereals. Are you sure? Yes, you betcha. You know that Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns? It sounds as if you eat Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice every morning. I wouldn't miss a morning. But say, do you know that wheat and rice shot from guns are nourishing? Why, sure. Everyone knows they furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin P1, niacin, and iron. Well, that's a tip for you fellas and girls. Every morning, enjoy this breakfast treat. Delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Look for the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Now to continue. King was working as a free lead, breaking the trail for the sergeant's team. It was he who first caught sight of the dogs burled in the snow beside the trail. And he looked back at his master, barking for his attention. Yes, boy, I see. There was a passenger on the sergeant's sled. Perhaps we've caught up with them, sergeant. Perhaps. They only left town a couple of hours before we did, and we've made good time. But I don't see any sign of them. Only the dogs. Someone's built a shelter against the wind. And there's a stove. At that moment, the tone of King's barking changed. Sergeant! There's someone lying on the ground beside the stove. It's Bill Hayden. Hulking. Hey, 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 hey. He's been shot. There's a first aid kit in my grub box. Get it, please. Right. 
Sergeant Preston. Who shot you, Bill? The Indians. There were six of them. Someone with a bandana across his face. I don't know who he was. Oh, where's Mary? Lie still. Uh, she's gone. They took her prisoner. Here's the case, Sergeant. Thanks, man. Forget about me, Sergeant. They've taken Mary. Go after him. Just as soon as I bandaged your head. Go. Oh. Your wound isn't serious. Any idea how long ago you were shot? We stopped just at noon. It's one o'clock. Matt and I got into White Horse shortly after you left, Bill. I was giving you a message, but it didn't say much, just that there was trouble at the lake. Red Carney has been selling whiskey to the Indians. Huh? Why, of all the Can you dirty... prove that, charge? No. But he's trying to rent Jim out of business, Sergeant. He wants to buy our post for a measly $5,000, and he's doing everything he can to make Jim sell it. Well, I'm sure he incited the Indians against us. He offered only 5000 Why, the man's a thief. I'll say he is. The place is worth fifteen anyway. Exactly. There you are. You believe Red had anything to do with your being ambushed? I'm sure of it. The man with the bandana hiding his face? Oh, no. No, that wasn't Red. He isn't the kind to take chances himself. He doesn't have to with all the crooks and renegades he has working for him. A fine representative for the Yukon Trading Company. I agree, but the company post is the nearest shelter, Matt. Will you take Bill's sled and drive him there? I'll be glad to. Oh, I don't want to go to Red's post. Better go there, Bill. I'd like you and Matt to keep an eye on Red. You may depend on it. We shall, Sergeant. Oh, but Mary... I'm going after her. Well, this storm... There'll be no trail to follow. Did you recognize any of the Indians? One of them might have been Sleeping Bear. Isn't his village on Painted Creek? That's right. North of the lake, not far from Jim's place. Uh, a few miles. Well, that's where I'll start looking, and I'll stop at Jim's on the way to tell him what's happened. Here, I'll help you to your sled. Oh. Easy, Puzzle. Easy now. At that season of the year, it grew dark shortly after two o'clock. And the northern lights were streaking across the sky by the time Sergeant Preston reached Jim Kenyon's trading post. Okay. How are you, Husky? Jim opened the door as soon as the sergeant stopped his team. Sergeant Preston. Come on, King. Jim, I have bad news. Oh, I'm the one who has bad news. Look what I just found. A note. Stuck in the door with this knife. Printed on wrapping paper. Mary's been taken prisoner. I know. How? We found Bill on the trail wounded. A friend of mine, Matt Carson, has taken him to Red Carney's post. What happened? Your daughter and Bill were ambushed on the forest trail. They want me to pay ransom. $5,000 to be left near the big rock at the mouth of Painted Creek by midnight tomorrow, and your daughter will be returned safe. This is Red Carney's doing it. Five thousand dollars. He knows I don't have that much cash at this time of the year. He knows the only way I could raise five thousand dollars by tomorrow would be by selling out to him. He hired Sleeping Bear, that crook Louis Lamont, to ambush Bill and Mary. I wish we could prove that. He's waiting for me to cross the lake. Waiting for me to come and beg him for money. And I'll have to do it, Sergeant. I can't take any chance with Mary's life. I have a suggestion, Jim. No, 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 no. I don't want you to try to find Mary. Those crooks might kill her if they thought you were after them. Yes, they might. That wasn't my suggestion. What then? I'd like to write a ransom note for you to show to Red. I don't understand. Do you have any wrapping paper? I sure have plenty of it. Right over here. Good. Here you are. I want a piece just about the same size as this note. Well, that does it. How many rifles do you carry in stock? I, I have uh, 24. Why? You suppose Red has as many? Probably. Make it 48. What? Just a moment. The sergeant printed with deliberate crudeness. When he had finished, wrinkled the paper to give it the same appearance as the note which had been pinned to Jim's door. Now, read it, Jim. Yeah. Hey, what's this? Forty-eight rifles and ten cases of ammunition to be lifted. What's the idea? I want you to show this note to Red Carney and tell him that you have only twenty-four rifles in stock. I want you to ask him to sell you another twenty-four so you can meet this demand. He'll refuse. That wouldn't surprise me. But as you say, he's probably waiting for you to come and beg him for money. When you show him this note asking for rifles instead... He'll know something's wrong. I hope this note will make him afraid that his hired renegades mean to double-cross him. My friend Matt and Bill aren't mentioning the fact that I'm around here to Red. I don't want you to do it either. Then you'll not be coming with me, eh? No. What will you be doing? I want you to wait for three hours before you start across the lake. That'll give me time to go to White Eagle's village. Oh, I'm sure White Eagle doesn't have anything to do with this. So am I. But I may need his help. 
And I'm sure White Eagle would like nothing better than to rid this district of Sleeping Bear and his renegades and men like Red Connie and... And Louis Lamont and Taggy Schmike. All of them. White Eagle knows what's good for his people. But, Sergeant, even if Sleeping Bear is the one who's holding Mary prisoner, it would be too dangerous to attack his village. We must think of her safety. I am, Jim. Believe me. And all you want me to do is... Go to Connie and ask for the rifles and come back here and wait for me. Is that all? That's all. Leave the rest to White Eagle and me. It was hard for Jim to control his impatience. But he waited for the three hours the sergeant had asked before he started for Red Carney's post. He made the trip in two hours. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. And when he entered the store, he found Red, Taggish Mike, and Matt Carson sitting around the stove. Bill was lying on a cot in the corner. Oh, dear. Unexpected. Oh, have you read? Oh, how are you, Bill? I'm all right. This is Matt Carson, Jim. Seems he found Bill on the trail wounded. Brought him here. That was murdering redskins. I've heard from Mary. Oh, you have? This note, read it. Hmm? What does it say, Jim? They want 48 rifles and 10 cases of ammunition. That makes sense. That's the kind of ransom an Indian would think of. Why, oh, that dirty surprise you read? Oh, not exactly. On. Well, uh, it's dangerous to give them firearms. No more dangerous than to give them firewater. I never... All I want to know is, will you sell me 24 rifles? I only have 24 myself, and they're demanding 48. You mean to follow these instructions? Of course. Well, uh, I'm not sure I have that many rifles. Come on, Taggish. We'll take a look in the storeroom. Okay. Jim, have you seen the sergeant? Yes, but he told me not to mention his name to Red. He told us the same thing. It was the sergeant who wrote the note I showed Red. Then you haven't received a ransom note. The one I received asked for $5,000. Just what Red offered you for the post. Yes. It all works out, doesn't it? Where's the sergeant now? I don't know. He was going to see White Eagle. I told him it was sleeping bear I saw on the trail. He wants White Eagle to help him. Help him do what? Quiet. Here they come. Jim, I only have half a dozen rifles in stock. I can't spare them. Do you realize my daughter's life is in danger? I can't help that. I can't give you any rifles. That, that's your last word? My last word. Very well, then. I'll have to find them someplace else. Hardly a word was spoken after Jim had left. Red suggested turning in early, and at ten o'clock the post was in darkness. At midnight, Bill was wakened by a touch on his shoulder. Bill, wake up. Huh? What is it? Red and Taggish have gone. Yeah? They took a dog team. You mind if I borrow yours? You're going to follow them? Try to, anyway. Oh, good luck. Be careful. I mean to be. There were only half a dozen cabins in Sleeping Bear's village. Mary Kenyon lay on a cot in the largest of them, her wrists and ankles bound. Louis Lamont and Sleeping Bear were playing cards by the light of a guttering candle. Both of them jumped to their feet as a dog team stopped outside. And Louis ran to the window opening. He pulled back the deerskin that covered it. Red and Taggish Mike. Boss, what's the idea of coming here? What's the idea of trying to double-cross me? Yeah, how about it? How about what? Oh, you didn't write that ransom note, I suppose. Why, sure. I wrote it just like you tell me to. Wait until the Northwest Mounted hears that. They'll never hear it. Sleeping Bear. Uh, did you deliver that note at the post? Sleeping Bear do. The note called for rifles and ammunition. What? You're crazy. I asked for $5,000. Don't lie. I saw the note. And so did I. And I saw what you were up to right away. You want to arm these dirty savages and then wipe us out at the post. Set yourself up as a little king, maybe. Of course, I asked for $5,000. Ask the girl if you don't believe me. I showed her the note. He asked for money, all right. Well, then the one that Kenyon showed me? It's a trick. You should never have come here, Red. You might have been followed. Do a word, Red. Sergeant Fred. Get him. Don't move, any of you. Chief, call for your men. This man can't help him. White Eagle and his braves have the whole village surrounded. You may come in now, Matt. Thanks, Sergeant. And take their guns. Right. Now then, all of you are under arrest in the name of the Crown. Where'd you come from? White Eagle, his braves, and I were waiting in the forest behind your post. When you left, we followed you. Why, it's the only reason that I came here... I thought Louie and Sleeping Bear might be responsible for taking Mary prisoner. I, I wanted to plead with him. I don't order... believe him. Don't worry, Mary, I don't. I'll cut those ropes. There. Thank you, Sergeant. 
He planned everything. Oh, look, I'm not to blame. I, I was only following instructions. The Yukon Trading Company ordered me to get control of Kenyon's post. I had to follow orders. What do you have to say to that, Matt? He lies, of course. He was authorized to buy the post for 15000 My dad would sell for that. If he felt the Indians would be treated fairly. I wonder if he'd sell and stay on as manager, Mary. Why, I think so. It, it sounds like a fine offer, but who... Yeah, just who do you think you are to make such an offer? This is Matt Carson, Mary. How do you do? A pleasure, Miss Kenyon. A pleasure, Miss Kenyon. Who do you think you are? He happens to be the new president of the Yukon Trading Company, Red. Uh, what? And you, Red, happen to be an ex-employee. It's as simple as that. But losing your job shouldn't bother you. You and these others will be well occupied for the next 20 years behind bars. This case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a little game the whole family can play. See if you can fill in the missing words. Your turn first, mothers. The real value in breakfast cereals is... Well, that's easy, isn't it? The answer is delicious Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. It's the deluxe breakfast topped with milk or cream and succulent fruit. And now, dads, it's your turn. The outstanding taste of Quaker popped wheat and rice is... Ah, yes. Dads know it's the toasty, nut-like flavor of good natural grain. The sun-ripened natural flavor that old Mother Nature puts into it. It's never coated with factory sweetening. And that's the beauty of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The whole family can sweeten them with sugar to suit their own special taste. And now, let's quiz the youngsters. The ones shot from guns are made by... Sure, you fellas and girls know that Quaker makes the one shot from gun. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That's what makes them extra crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. And everybody in the family knows that every spoonful gives you extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So for a delightful, nourishing breakfast treat the whole family loves to eat, be sure to get delicious Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. They come only in the big red and blue packages with the sealed inner lining that keeps them crisp as can be. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, there's been a robbery in Whitehorse. Two men held up the express office and took a bank shipment of cash and gold dust. Any special instructions, sir? No, that's all the information I have. But bring in those crooks. I'll do my best, Inspector. But what Preston thought might be a job of routine trailing turned out to be an unusual case involving a small boy and his dog. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time by Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, fellas and girls, if you want to grow big and strong, eat Quaker Oats often. You get more strength, more energy from oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So tomorrow, start eating delicious Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>